Howdy ho there champs. Now I'm gonna give you a bit of two for one special. AMD's and Intel's announcements at CES, some game changing announcements for mobile, for laptops and for desktops. And actually stick around because the Ryzen and we're going to PCI Express 4. So stick around for that. All right champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. First, let's get it stuck into Intel. I think the best thing Intel announced was the Ice Lake CPUs. So if you don't know what these are, these are the CPUs that are gonna be used in the XPS 13, MacBook Pros, X1 Carbons, Asus ZenBooks, and stuff like that. The ultra portable 13 inch, 14 inch thin and light laptops. Now there are some really important game changing features. One's gonna be based on the Sunny Cove architecture. So this is a new architecture, 10 nanometer. It's gonna be more power efficient. It's gonna be faster, they produce less heat, and it's gonna have IPC gains because it's a new architecture. So we should expect a big boost in performance but the game changing features are doubling in the graphics performance much better graphics the way they're making this CPU is they're 3D stacking it so they're stacking everything higher instead of spreading it out and making it bigger and it promises to have a big boost in graphics performance so you might have seen the trend with 13 inch laptops where they're starting to put MX150s in here because it's much better than integrated graphics we'll have to wait and see how good these graphics are it's supposed to be over double the performance of the current GPU so we might be getting somewhere around the performance of the MX150 which is very interesting and it's going to be a game changer because you don't have to put another GPU in there and you don't have two things contributing to the heat it's going to be much more efficient much more better on the battery and you should be able to game on this thing you won't be playing the highest settings, no. It's not going to replace 15 inch laptops or even discrete graphics in general, but you should be able to game at 1080p, you know, at least lowish settings. Whereas with the current Intel HD, you really have to put the settings down really low and put it to 720 for AAA titles. Also, another game changing thing is Thunderbolt 3 natively built into the CPU and into the chipset. Now Thunderbolt 3 is a friggin' nightmare trying to get things to work with Thunderbolt 3. Some Thunderbolt 3s don't work on some devices because they're using a different Thunderbolt 3 chipset. You really have to do your research when it comes to Thunderbolt 3, especially when it comes to eGPUs. I've tested my eGPU on quite a few laptops. Nightmare, okay, nightmare. It's not plug and play that easy. It is buggy. They really need to fix it, and they have. So they're not going to be charging royalties anymore for Thunderbolt 3. It's going to be free. It's going to be a cost saving for manufacturers. Also, being built in natively into the chipset should just plug in and work. You don't have to use a third party Thunderbolt chip and use whatever crappy software they got. It's built straight in. It'll be just like USB. You just plug it in, it just works, and any Thunderbolt. Bolt 3 device should work if you have this CPU. So that is game changing. Cannot wait for this end of this year. So you can expect these laptops, you know, like the XP MacBook Pros and that really great laptops at the end of the year. Even though the MacBook Pros do use a 28 watt part, they still have a 15 watt dual core MacBook Pro. Hopefully they're waiting for this to refresh that. So let's get into AMD's announcements, some, some awesome announcements, but Navi's not coming, like end of the year maybe Navi. So this is virtually Vega 2, I guess, the second generation Vega 2, the Radeon 7. What has happened to Navi? Is this just a stopgap GPU? I'm not sure. But this thing looks pretty beast, okay? 7 nanometer, second generation Vega, 16 gigabyte HBM memory, and it is 699. And usually AMD cards are cheap, but apparently this thing costs that much to produce, like... They're making razor thin margins on this and they actually don't want to release it for this price, but 16 gigabytes HBM memory, it's expensive, okay? What I like about AMD cards is now, especially with Adobe's update, I might have to do a video on this, but I reckon they're faster than CUDA cards in Premiere now. And AMD are great for content creation. Like a lot of 3D apps love the bandwidth that AMD graphics cards give you. We're talking 29% improvement in Premiere Pro, 62% in OpenCL performance. Gaming at 4K, it has up to 35% more performance. And compared to the last Vega, 25% more performance at the same amount of power. Coming out early February, 699. I want one. I want to see if they're going to put these into some Macs. 
hopefully Apple released some sort of update so that I can actually use this Radeon 7 on my Mac. We have to wait and see. I think there would have to be a product with this graphics card before Apple support it. Maybe the iMacs might put this in. Maybe the Mac Pro. If you look on the screen now and you can see the specs of it, given that this has 60 compute units rather than 64, maybe there's an enterprise model coming out with 64 and that's the difference. But then they actually said something about the third generation rise and this is Zen 2. This was faster than the 9900K in Cinebench and used 30% less power. Now I still think for gaming, the Intel will be the best. If we're gonna look at single core and overclock ability, the 9900K will probably still be the king. But that is amazing that they even matched and even beat the Intel and they're using 30% less power. If they could half the TDP of this CPU and then put it in laptops and it's 30% more power efficient than the ninth generation Intel Coffee Lake parts, you could imagine that they could make a mobile part of this and it could possibly compete with the 45 watt H processors currently in laptops. I really want to see if that happens. That'll be friggin' amazing. Also, this CPU supports PCI Express 4.0 will be out maybe this year, maybe early next year. Certainly there are no motherboards that support it at the moment, but what this means is doubling of the bandwidth. So for example, 16 lanes in your by 16 slot will have double the amount of bandwidth. And you can imagine the bottleneck that is created with Thunderbolt running through by four lanes will disappear. Maybe they have to go to Thunderbolt 4 to make that happen. Maybe they need some sort of up update or a new chipset to support the extra bandwidth in PCI Express 4 but if four lanes now double the bandwidth you now have virtually the bandwidth of eight lanes in PCI Express 3 in four lanes so that's very interesting so I don't think I got that much more from CES <sighs> I can start doing all my reviews of all these friggin laptops that are piling up in here and yeah thank you guys for watching give me a thumbs up like subscribe love you champs catch you next one tally ho